uh, yes, um, said thanks to Mike for that intro. I don't know how I'm supposed to how I'm supposed to follow up with that, but uh, we'll we'll see what we can do here. Um, this talk is about platform plugin development with uh, NX and Capacitor. Um, so with that, as Mike mentioned, my name is Brandon Roberts. I'll give you my spiel here because that's what I do. Um, my name is Brandon, Brandon Roberts. You can follow me on Twitter at Brandon T. Roberts and on Twitch at Brandon T. Roberts. Uh, on Twitter, you know, I tweet out GIFs. I talk about sports. I even talk about boilerplate and stuff like that there. And you'll probably see a little sprinkle of that uh, in here. But uh, generally have fun there. So definitely uh, check me out there. I also work as a developer advocate at Narwhal, just helping people get uh, the, the most out of it. Like I said, which we're focusing on today, and also a Google Developer Expert, which means like I'm an Angular. I've, I've been an Angular OG, if you, if you want to say, uh, for a while. So I've been uh, a lot of been uh, able to contribute a lot to the community, and, it, and it's given a lot back to me too. Uh, also a, a maintainer on the uh, NGRX project, uh, where we build reactive libraries for Angular and have a lot of fun. The, the team is a lot of fun and I, I have a lot of fun there. So. so yeah, let's talk about cover what the agenda is. I'll talk about you know what uh, NX is in general if you haven't uh, heard about it already and how you can use it to collaborate um, across applications, libraries, and how capacitor plugins fit into that picture. Um, so what is uh, NX? NX is a smart, uh, extensible uh, build framework. Um, it drives monorepos where we're doing more than just code, code co-location. Uh, we're giving you shared code and also providing you additional tooling to run your monorepo effectively. It also has a, a CLI that's published on NPM with a lot of a uh, lot more features than I'll get through in this talk. Um, and also integrates with modern tooling. Uh, modern tools and other tool, modern tooling and tools that you're used to. Uh, so as I mentioned, NX is smart. And you know, I, know, I know you're expecting me to go into a, a long diatribe about all the things that NX has, but uh, NX is smart in, in a, that it helps you build, like I said, multiple applications and libraries together in a monorepo. So we'll kind of dive into like the mental model around NX and the ways that it helps you. Uh, so NX is smart. Um, there are a few concepts that NX has as a mental model so that we can kind of build up how we uh, work with these applications and libraries. Uh, there's the project graph, which uh, the project graph contains all the source code and uh, files in your repository. Uh, that you're using that is for code analysis. There's also a task graph uh, for running targets or tasks in your uh, repo. Uh, it's metadata driven, uh, which means that you'll get uh, additional tooling that's uh, driven by, uh, not driven by code, but driven by more configuration. There's affected commands for uh, only running the certain things that you need in your monorepo code generation for quickly scaffolding out uh, areas of your app or libraries, uh, and also caching, and even more than that. So just to talk about the project graph, it's used to reflect the source code in your repository. Some of these things come from your repository itself, and some of them aren't authored in your repository, such as tools like Webpack, React, Angular, uh, things like that, things that you install there. Uh, the project graph analyzes those files, uh, your installed dependencies, TypeScript files, and others, figuring out these dependencies for you. Because when you're working in a monorepo with multiple applications and libraries, you want to know how those things are grafted together. And also analyzes that graph and provides an updated one after each analysis. Uh, building on top of that, the ta their task graph. So the task graph is just the construction of things that are run based on the project graph. So anytime you run, uh, anytime you run commands or um, what we'll get into later, uh, NX creates this task graph to create that project and then 
drive executes those tasks. I uh, talked about metadata, and if you've, you may be familiar with this, but it uses uh, schemas to, or uh, metadata to um, drive its functionality as opposed to being hard coded. As you can see here, it's just an example schema of um, data that you're taking for inputs, auto completion work. All this is defined in schema instead of in code. So this would just defines a schema for showing inputs, prompts, and validations for adding a new application. As I mentioned, it's also metadata driven. This metadata is used by uh, NX itself to uh, used by NX itself and also used by other uh, third party integrations like VS Code and WebStorm and even GitHub integration. This just gives you gives the ability to have a, a richer experience on top of NX. Uh, as I mentioned before, there's the effective commands. When you're scaling up across multiple applications, your, your workspace is going to grow. So retesting or rebuilding all those projects uh, just becomes unmaintainable. And to address this, NX has code analysis to get the minimum set of projects that it needs to perform a given task. So looking at the diagram here, we're changing, we can look to see what those dependencies are, and we can also see what changes are affected by, what projects are affected by a given change. So NX looks at the files that are changed in your uh, PR or your merge request and looks at the nature of those changes, you know, what you actually did in those changes to figure out the list of projects in the workspace that can be affected by them. Uh, NX comes with a lot of command or uh, commands that give you a consistent way to work within your application in your repo. Uh, you can generate files, serve applications, uh, build build these applications that you're going to ship, and you know, of course having a web native application is something that you're going to do. You're going to serve these web applications locally and build them you know, production and ship them off that way. Uh, also testing and dependency graph, you can visualize the, the, the different uh, projects between your applications and or the dependencies between your application and libraries. And as I mentioned before, the affected commands. So build framework, and what that means is we are we help you to like orchestrate and uh, handle building of different ecosystems. So we have first class support for React, Angular, and Node, and Next.js, and even more. Uh, even uh, we'll talk about how we fit into other ecosystems like Ionic and Capacitor. Also, if you're you know just building apps with uh, even building apps with stencil with no framework at all, and building on top of that. Linux is extensible in that you can build uh, plugins on top of Linux itself. Uh, and this is where we get to some of the areas where you can extend to your own uh, your own ecosystems. And I'll walk through that also later. But NX plugins, as I mentioned, there are NPM packages that provide two main sets of functionality that extend in NX workspace, where you have your applications libraries, or in this case, we're going to be talking about plugins. There are generators is one thing that uh, is that you provide that NX provides there and executors. Uh, so generators automate changes to the file system. Uh, they are, uh, they work with a virtual file system. So uh, you can generate files, you can scaffold changes or uh, automate common tasks within your uh, repository. Uh, they're at a minimum or just uh, vanilla JavaScript. They're just functions when you just call them uh, anytime you run Commands. If you're use, if you're used to using Angular, use uh, use a generate um, command to generate a new application. But that is essentially what the generator is. As I mentioned, you can create and update, uh, modify conf configuration, delete files, 
Uh, you can do this for applications, libraries, and uh, components. So just as an example, as I mentioned, you can use the generate command to generate an app. And this, like I said, all these things build on top of uh, the metadata and the schema that we can use before. The next thing is executors. Uh, so executors are not uh, this kind of executor, but <laughs> but it's a little a little something that uh, performs tasks in that way. So executors define how you perform an action on a project. Uh, anytime you run uh, NX test or NX or serve, you are invoking an executor, or if you're familiar with the Angular ecosystem, a builder. Um, but these allow you to, like I said, build, test, lint, uh, use for applications lab and libraries. And you can also, custom, like I said, customize this behavior. Uh, so one example there is using the NX serve uh, my app and that underneath is using an executor that uh, spins up, starts up your web server. It uses, um, it starts up your web server to serve up your application. And those are the two main uh, things that are in NX plugins and how we can extend, like they said, the NX ecosystem. Just a big uh, shout out here. There, there is an NX plugin that you can use today if you haven't already for developing Ionic and Capacitor uh, applications uh, in a cross or cross platform in a, in a monorepo. So this the site is nx10.dev. Um, Devin Shoemaker is shout out to him for uh, putting that together, and I'll show an example of that when I demo the. Um, demo the uh, plugin, how we're going to author a plugin within this uh, way. So at a minimum, we want to start out with uh, NX, create NX workspace. You can just call it my org, or it could be similar to what you would use on uh, our NPM for your scope. And you start with an empty workspace. As I mentioned before, it, we since we have this plugin system, we can support other ecosystems. You can add React uh, from the NXN or Ionic, uh, or the uh, NXN slash Ionic Angular package, which will give you an Ionic Angular application uh, that uses capacitor as a native bridge there. So after you set up your uh, your initial setup. You run the init command to add capacitor and any other dependencies you have and generate an app uh, just like that using the using this uh, NX plugin. So like I said, once it gives you that, uh, all these things are integrated into your workspace to standardize what you uh, want to do there. Uh, mention modern tooling. Uh, so Modern tooling such as TypeScript, um, Storybook, if you're wanting to build a design system around your applications that you have in your workspace, uh, it provides tooling for those. Uh, Jest for running tests, Cypress with, for end-to-end -end tests. So you can use all these things to get your, uh, get your environment up and running and also ESLint for uh, uh, code quality checks. Uh, I, mentioned I mentioned caching before, but um, this at a, in, at a high level is allowing you to, or NX remembers like the, the state of your repo and the context that it was uh, using when you perform a particular task. So if I were to run uh, this particular set of tests and I immediately run that set of tests again, I would get the cache output. So if you're thinking about in terms of building your application, let's say you have a suite of applications uh, there or plugins in this particular case, then running those uh, ones again, running those two tasks back to back with no changes, you'll just get the cached output. So that brings us to how we, uh, I'm sure you've heard a lot about capacitor already. So I'm going to keep the overview of capacitor brief and then we'll get into the plugins. The so capacitor is uh, cross-platform runtime for web apps. Uh, 
we're all about building these web native applications to give you that uh, rich experience on top of existing technologies that uh, are more prevalent in the in in the broader web ecosystem, and it's been the successor to uh, Cordova. And like I said, there there are plenty of other good talks about um, a capacitor itself and what it does. But what we want to do here is focus on capacitor plugins because that is what the is at the heart of uh, what capacitor capacitor is. So capacitor plugins enable JavaScript to interface directly with uh, native APIs. If you're building with um, the latest Ionic and uh, capacitor or Ionic and capacitor, you're 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 going to be using these already. So uh, these give you a lot of the, that functionality out of the box there. There are official plugins and uh, community plugins, and uh, so. What we're focusing on today is kind of like we talked about building these applications and libraries and monorepo. Uh, so we talked about kind of what the development workflow is to, is today, and this was covered in in a different talk. So, but at the beginning, uh, when you want to create a new plugin, you initialize the repo, which you can use the you know, capacitor uh, init or capacitor plugin. Uh, package to do that, to initialize a new repo. You go through this life cycle of you developing the plugin and then you publish or you link the plugin. Uh, and then you can then in turn go into your application and sync that those changes uh, there. Uh, and then that cycle goes there. But as we mentioned before, we want to build these things together. So if we think of a, a, lib a library as um, a place to a library as a, a capacitor plugin as a library, then we can leverage some of those same ideas uh, to build those things together in a monorepo to shorten some of that cycle there. So NX plus capacitor plugins, so you build them in a monorepo, you get the single version policy to where your uh, plugins are going to be on the same version uh, and then you if these are just plugins you're developing for your internal applications you have them all uh, consistent you have consistent build tooling and you get to build those apps and plugins alongside each other and once you start building more of these you're going to get you're just going to get more uh, code sharing out of the box there so i will going to do a uh, walk through how to uh, how when about capacitor or using a capacitor plugin in in the next monorepo and show how that process works so um, a repo here so as I mentioned before I have generated a workspace that has an ionic uh, angular application in it that I used in X in extend for and the plugin that I wanted to bring in is one that I've uh, used before uh, and I've had I've dealt with before about uh, the HTTP plugin, which is a community plugin that lets you get around cores issues. So I know everyone loves cores. Uh, so this plugin um, works around that on the on the native uh, allows you to work with those API native way. Uh, so I've already brought in the core. <laughs> core. See now I shouldn't be watching the jab, but <laughs> core life, man. I see what you did there. Um, but yeah, the uh, what I want to show here is I've brought in the the HTTP as a library, which I haven't wired this up yet. But we want to go through how we can connect these in a monorepo together and build off of that. So for this, for the sake of um, typing a lot of commands, I'm going to I'm going to copy some of this in and we'll see uh, by my uh, I can how far how far we get with this one, but 
uh, first I just copied, I created a new project. As I mentioned, this thing is driven by metadata. So I created a HTTP project, which is just linking to the HTTP source. And I'm just gonna compile the source files for the package there uh, into compile the sources for the package. And I'm also going to have some assets that are bundled with uh, the HTTP plugin. So next, I'm just going to define a define this project in the index.json file and also add the uh, the ts the add it to the ts config for the paths so at this point i've uh wired up the the plugin to my monorepo and i want to if i haven't missed any steps i'm going to build the build the library here and uh we can see that the target was built uh target was built there or the library was built and if i link the apps i'll see the http library uh there so now i can now I can just go in and use uh, this plugin uh, in use this plugin in the repo itself, or use this plugin in my application. So if I go into the data service here, and as I mentioned before, I'm gonna do some quick copying here uh, for that, and go to the home component where I'm using the service. And uh, just integrate this plugin directly into the integrate this plugin directly into the application. So just going to update some text here and save that. So now uh, I can serve up the app. Uh, as I mentioned before, if all went well and I typed in everything correctly, I guess we're already serving on port here. Let's do so there. One. But yes, this is how I would go about uh, building the plugin to be used within the uh, Ionic application. So now uh, it's building and serving correctly. So I'll walk through how we can go, how to go through the setup of integrating this plugin uh, with the application. So. Uh, in the application itself, I want to define the capacitor plugin and the package that data for the application. And that's just a requirement of how the how it, the, the syncing happens there. So I have my application built and I will go NX build my app. And then what it's gonna do is build uh, the application so that I can sync it into my native app. Because uh, I already have a, an Android target here. Uh, so I build, while that's building, um, I'll, then I'll, after that builds, I will take, we'll take a look at the workspace configuration here. Like I said, some of these things were, were able to get me up and running quickly to be able to uh, sync the application uh, using capacitor, but my application is built. So next I can run my app and sync Android. And it will copy all those assets, uh, including my custom plugin locally. Uh, as you can see here, my capacitor plugin locally into the repo, into my application there. So after I've done that, I can run the uh, my app. I can run the open Android. 
and that will open the IDE uh, for my application. So the open happens, and I can use this cycle to develop, keep, if I wanted to keep continuing to develop the plugin, uh, I would develop the plugin there, and I can keep all my uh, code in one place and still have the tooling uh, built around there. Uh, one more thing I would, I would have here is the uh, run command. And this is something, as I mentioned, was new in capacitor uh, three. But then you'll, um, new in capacitor three, and then we could easily integrate the run command into uh, the workspace here, as we have ones for here for open already. So I could define, I'll just type it in here, for one for run and use the capacitor run command, and use run for Android. Now I can, like I said, it's all metadata. Uh, use the run command to bring up the application and uh, it'll run the application, bring it up in my emulator. And like I said, we can build our, we can build our application and our plugins together all in the same environment. Uh, to recap, uh, Index is the smart uh, system or smart build extensible build framework that has plugins that you can extend to your ecosystem. Capacitor lets you develop these custom plugins uh, for your use cases, even whether you're doing them standalone or in your repo with your other applications. And we can combine those two in a mono repo together and uh, get the best of that development environment of both areas where you can build Angular, React, uh, vanilla web apps and use capacitor plugins with those to iterate those. Or even if you're porting other plugins to capacitor, it gives you that functionality there. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, you can find the uh, repo, uh, which will be shared out later. And I'll also share the slides there. But thank you for having me once again. Um, and that's it.